Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. We're going to continue working problems with dealing with the moment of a force. Uh, here we're going to be doing scalar uh, calculations just like we've done in the last uh, section. All that means is our problem is two-dimensional. All the forces, uh, the moment arms, everything lies in the plane of the board here. Uh, and so what we're going to be uh, dealing with here is a piece of metal, let's say, or a piece of wood, some solid piece here. And we have three forces acting, one in each of these corners. There's no force here. We have a vertical force oriented straight up and down. Uh, here we have another force, 15 kilonewtons, oriented 45 degree angle, as, as noted on the drawing. And then here we have a force coming out of this corner, 20 kilonewtons, but it's at a 30 degree angle down from the horizontal. And we have some distances here, 250 millimeters, 400 millimeters. All right, so uh, what we want to do first for part A we're going to have a, a few different parts here to try to get as much as we can out of this uh, problem. We want to find the moment of force F sub B uh, about the axis of rotation, which is point A. Okay, So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, the moment of force B acting about point A. Okay, So what this means is the axis of rotation would be here. So if you take a nail and you put it in there and you bang it in so that only this thing can swing about point A, we want to figure out what is the moment that force B is actually causing a rotation about point A. That's what it's basically asking us for. But it's tricky here because point, uh, I should say, force B is not vertically oriented or horizontally oriented. It's a force at a 45 degree angle. So anytime you see forces at angles and you're trying to figure out what the moment is about at a certain point, you need to mentally split the force up into component vectors, a horizontal component and a vertical component. And then essentially, since you know from vectors that you can take any vector and split it up into components like this, then you can kind of treat the problem as if, there, as if there's not just one force here, but there's a horizontal force and a vertical force. Uh, you can kind of mentally replace that oblique vector with a horizontal and vertical component and just solve the problem that way. So mentally, what we're trying to do is figure out how much this force is going to cause a rotation about this point. If we put a nail here and banged it in so that's the only place it can rotate. So there's a vertical component of this force, and there's a horizontal component of the force. So before you write any math down, you need to think, okay, before you start wasting your time on the board. There's a horizontal component and a vertical component. Now, for the horizontal component, that would be the same thing as basically grabbing point B and pulling to the right, because this force has a horizontal component like that. Notice that the line of action, remember the, the, the term I use, line of action, it just means I take my force, and it's like a rope, you know? If I'm pulling on a rope, the line of action goes all the way up and down the rope. The force, you can kind of think about as being transmitted, uh, kind of almost like you can slide the vector up and down the direction that the force is acting on, right? So here we have this thing attached at point B, and it's a solid piece of metal. So whenever I pull on point B, uh, in the horizontal component of this guy, the line of action goes up and down uh, through here. So the line of action of this force is actually going through the axis of rotation. So forget about the vertical component, forget about this force, forget about everything. If I put a nail here and hammer it in place, and I grab a rope and I just pull like this, is it going to cause a rotation about A? If you mentally just do this, you're going to realize that it's not going to rotate about point A at all because the line of action of this force goes straight through the axis of rotation. And that's a general thing I've mentioned a few times. Anytime a force is literally, uh, if you were to, to extend the force along its line of action, kind of draw a little dotted line and just kind of extend it, if it goes through the axis, there's no way it's going to cause any, 